Jurassic Park planted the idea that resurrecting extinct species was possible. MSN headline April 2025 elicited memories of Jurassic Park de-extinction plans. And then, late last year, the science of Jurassic Park became a reality. Ben Lamb is a computer programmer and founder of the Dallas-based Colossal Biosciences. Lamb told Joe Rogan he's a huge fan of Jurassic Park. Ben Lamb at MSN, quote, we're very excited about Jurassic Park and the release of the new movie, end quote. In late 2024, Lamb and his team announced they had successfully birthed three living dire wolves, genetically engineered hybrids, resurrected from ancient DNA and modern canid surrogates. The announcement caused a firestorm in the press. Headlines, the dire wolf is back. Is Jurassic Park next, USA Today? Scientists say they have resurrected the dire wolf, CNN. Scientists, dire wolf brought back from extinction after 13,000 years, ABC News. MSN, Colossal's next target, July 2025. An animal whose howl had not been heard on Earth since the last member of the species vanished more than 10,000 years ago. Continuing, three young dire wolves currently live on a 2,000 acre preserve in an undisclosed location to avoid the media and curiosity seekers. Architects of de-extinction science. The core group of Colossal includes Lamb, superstar geneticist Beth Shapiro, and legendary scientist George Church. The team includes 120 other scientists and researchers from a variety of fields. Former MIT professor George Church has long been a controversial figure known for his outspoken views on a wide range of scientific and ethical issues. He has been a vociferous advocate of alternative medicines and life extension. He appeared on 60 Minutes in 2015, and according to lifeextension.com, Dr. Church predicted that human aging could be eradicated by the year 2030. As we will soon see, Dr. Church has long championed the revival of extinct species, including his most controversial proposal, resurrecting prehistoric humans. Beth Shapiro has sparked her share of controversies as well. While aligned with the de-extinction movement, her sights have been set on creatures that blur the line between science and spectacle the dodo, and even dinosaurs. Resurrection or Recklessness, the Ethical Firestorm. The Dire Wolf Project has created a firestorm of controversy, especially within the scientific community, where questions of ethics authenticity and ambition collide. Critics have accused Colossal of creating nothing more than a quote unquote designer dog stunt and misleading the public. Bioethicists have been especially critical warning of unintended consequences for ecosystems. They warn introducing genetically modified predators into environments could destabilize food sources, displace native species, or trigger unforeseen 
ecological cascades. Beth Shapiro has been all over the media from YouTube podcasts to ABC Radio defending the Direwolf Project. She urges that everyone not view this project as a resurrection, but rather as a genomic restoration. How they brought it back. Scientists extracted genetic material from an extinct 12,000-year-old dire wolf. They analyzed and sequenced the DNA and implanted the cells in a petri dish to create viable embryos to eventually birth dire wolves. The paper was published in April of 2025 in BioRex on the ancestry and evolution of the extinct dire wolf. Authors included, of course, Ben Lamb, Beth Shapiro, and George Church. But it also included a rather famous producer, George Martin of Game of Thrones. From the abstract, our results reveal that two-thirds of direwolf ancestry is derived from a lineage sister to the clade comprising the gray wolf and coyote and the remaining one-third from a lineage near the base of canini diversity. We identified 80 genes evolving under diversifying selection in dire wolves. The process involved CRISPR. CRISPR clustered regularly interspersed short polyandromic repeats. Two paths to the past, de-extinction and backbreeding. While often lumped under de-extinction, the direwolf project is technically different. It doesn't resurrect extinct DNA, but edits existing genomes to approximate an ancient form. Beth Shapiro, new scientist, quote, once a species is gone, it is impossible to bring back an identical copy in every way. De-extinction is not a solution to the extinction crisis. Continuing, quote, but what we can do is to augment living species to recreate the key phenotypes of a species that can help ecosystems in the present, end quote. Backbreeding, in contrast, involves selectively breeding animals for generations, emphasizing traits that resemble an extinct species. A great example is the successful backbreeding of the quagga from modern zebras. Bovines with auric traits have been successfully backbred to have amplified those characteristics. The last aurochs went extinct in Poland in the 1630s. The effort to bring them back has been a long and arduous process. According to eurowildlife.org, two herds will now form the base for a semi-wild breeding herd of aurochs in the mountains of the Czech Republic. With backbreeding or de-extinction, the possibilities to bring back extinct species is endless. It is especially mind-boggling when one considers that in 2013, scientists recovered DNA from a frozen horse in the Canadian Yukon that was 700,000 years old. CBC, Ancient Yukon Horse 2013. A 700,000-year-old horse bone found in the permafrost of a Yukon gold mine has yielded a complete genetic profile, breaking scientific records and revealing many new insights about the evolution of horses. Shapiro, working with Colossal, has fully sequenced 
the genome of the dodo bird and is working to bring the bird back using DNA extracted from its closest living relative, the Nicobar pigeon. Unfortunately, the Nicobar is being hunted into extinction by indigenous tribes in Indian Ocean Islands. Only an estimated 1,000 of the birds are left in the wild. Once declared extinct in the wild, the Sahara oryx has made a stunning return thanks to a conservation effort that now sees over 600 individuals roaming free over Chad's deserts. Scientists employed selective genetic extraction and reintegration to diversify the dwindling oryx gene pool combating the looming threat of inbreeding among the few remaining individuals. The Pyrenean Ibex vanished in 2000. Scientists tried cloning the last survivor, but the effort failed. Two subspecies survived, the Besaite and Gredos, thriving in the rugged mountains of Spain, echoes of a lineage nearly lost. The Pyrenean Ibex is another prime candidate for backbreeding from its two surviving subspecies. New Zealand Rooted in centuries of migration, ritual, and resilience, Maori culture echoes across New Zealand's islands. The moa were giant emu-like birds that once roamed the forest of New Zealand and surrounding islands. <coughs> Moas were deeply embedded in Maori mythology and oral traditions, now remembered in chants, carvings, and ancestral stories. <coughs> in July 2025, Colossal Myosciences announced an initiative partnering with the native Maori to resurrect the giant moa. MSN, quote, this is a completely Maori initiative, end quote, adds Ben Lamb, CEO and co-founder of Colossal. Quote, we feel like the Colossal team is an extension of the research center and the Maori, end quote. Dinorinus robustus. Live science. We're bringing back avian dinosaurs, July 2025. Colossal announced that its scientists and local indigenous partners will bring back the South Island giant moa through genetic engineering within the next 10 years. Scientists are now sequencing ancient DNA and designing artificial eggs to bring this wingless titan back to life. The Haas Eagle of New Zealand has been extinct for centuries. With a wingspan reaching up to 10 feet, it was the largest eagle ever known. Scientists believe its closest living relatives, like Australia's little eagle, could be selectively bred to revive its formidable traits. From skyborne giants to ground-stalking phantoms, the southern hemisphere holds more than a share of evolutionary ghosts. It is believed that the last Tasmanian tiger went extinct in a zoo in 1926. The thylacine is now the focus of a bold de-extinction effort from Colossal. Using CRISPR, extracting DNA from its closest living relative, the Dunart, scientists have reconstructed over 99% of its genome. Woolly mammoths are a top candidate for de-extinction. The mammoths have been trudging through the snows of Siberia for nearly 
one million years. The last group of mammoths survived on Wrangell Island till 1650 BCE. This was centuries after the Egyptian pyramids had been built. The woolly mammoths may be gone, but thanks to Colossal, we're learning that extinction in the age of resurrection might only be a pause. Thanks for watching. Remember to hit the like button, subscribe, and please leave a comment. We'll see you soon.